Catbox is a little game that I picked up recently at my friendly local game store to play it with my daughter, my four-year-old Louisa. She saw it, she found that the illustration on the cover was really cute, which it is. And so, oh well, it wasn't too expensive, so we decided to give it a try. Catbox is a game about... Uh, about nothing, absolutely about nothing. It's a completely abstract game with cats and boxes on the components, and that's fine because cats are cute. Um, at the beginning of the game, each player receives one of these cards uh, representing the secret identity of that player. Most of these cards show cats. One of them shows a chihuahua, and we'll talk about the chihuahua later. If you get that one, that's a little bit of a special card. Most likely players will get a cat. So each player has a secret identity and each player receives a hand of cards from this deck here. Um, the hand is very small, one or two cards depending on the number of players. And these cards, as you can see, are all divided in four uh, areas and they may have a cat or an empty box in them. Also, these cards are double-sided. So when you get your hand of cards, uh, it's absolutely important that it's clear which side is the back and which side is the front. One of them will become the back and that one the front functionally during the game. For example, we play the game holding the cards up, so the side that faces, uh, that faces the owning player is the front and the side that is facing the other players is the back. You could put the cards on the table and that is the back so the players can see it and then you look at the other side here and it's the front. It's very important that the opponents can see the back of the cards because that is the side that they can play. Basically when you play a card, if you play it from your hand, you play it with the front side up but you can also play cards from other people's hands, in which case you use the, you use the back, you use the back of that card. What happens when you play a card, and this is pretty much your turn, you play a card from your hand or from somebody else's hand, you put it down, whoever now has one fewer cards in their hand draws a new card, and the game continues like this, continues until all cards in the deck have been exhausted, you can shorten the game by only using part of the cards. When you put down a card, uh, there are very few rules to follow. If the card that you put down has four cats, the card must cover one, only one, and exactly one previous space on the tableau. So I could play this card here, I could play it here, I could play it here, I could play it here, but I wouldn't be able to play it here or here because it has four cats. If I am playing a card that has three cats and a box, an empty box on it, then I can cover one or two, one or two uh, squares with it. So I could play it here, but I could also play it here, I could play it here, I have a lot more freedom. So with four cats on your card, you have more chances of getting the cat that you want, with three, fewer chances, but much more flexibility. Um, what are you trying to do? You're trying to create a tableau that shows as many of your little cat as possible. At the end of the game, uh, you score points and you score a point for each for each card, sorry, for each area on the board that is showing one of your cats. So for example, in this case, the pink player scores one, two, three, four, five. So each cat that is showing is a point. You also get to, spo to score an extra point for each cat in the bigger continuous group that you have on the table. That means uh, uh, you look at the biggest group uh, and you only count uh, cats that are adjacent orthogonally, not diagonally, and pretty much you score those again. So we would be able, uh, pink player in this case, also scores one, two, three extra points because it's the biggest group that they have. Uh, black cat player has one, two, three, four points plus these two because that is the biggest group that they have. You count all points and that's it, that's how the game works. Incredibly simple, incredibly linear, incredibly straightforward, but with a couple of really interesting elements here. Um, it's very tactical, there's no point in planning ahead because you may be staring at your cards very intently and then somebody else plays them. So pretty much when I draw a card I don't worry about what I have in my hand until 
it's time for me to play it. But the game is so simple that that doesn't generate much analysis paralysis, not, not really, not at all. Um, because, well, because the options are usually, I wouldn't say obvious, but there are a couple of clear options to choose from. And the game to me strikes exactly that nice balance there. Uh, there are enough options that it's fun to choose among them and not too many that feels overwhelming or leading to analysis paralysis. And also, uh, it has an interesting element in that it can be quite aggressive, quite confrontational. It is not just about forming a nice group of cats, it is about protecting it, because if pink player has made that group, oh, look at this, I'm gonna cover those two squares, and too bad for you. And if my six-year-old, four-year-old has worked very hard to make that group, right now she's crying. But she isn't because I warned her about this, and so now she knows that you don't really think about scoring until you have placed your cats in a situation that is safe for them. For example, right now, this is a safe situation for this cat because no one is able to cover it. You would need to cover three squares to do so, and you cannot do that. You can only cover up to two. But if I were to do this, then I have a bigger pink area, and again, that pink cat is protected. So it is just about warning your little ones, maybe even your adult friends, if you're playing this with them, uh, so that they don't get too annoyed or disappointed. They know that the point of the game is make and protect because it's perfectly legitimate and morally justified to completely destroy other people's patterns, uh, to cut their big group into smaller groups so they don't get to score at the end because, well, if they put themselves in this situation after you warn them, they have no one to blame but themselves. So, uh, this is the game, incredibly simple, it's incredibly linear, my four-year-old can play it and she loves it, my six-year-old can play it and she loves it, I haven't played with adults yet, I only played it with them, but I really enjoy it, uh, this game is more fun than I would say it has any right to be from such simple components, simple rules, and to me it's so so tight, I mean, as a filler, as an after filler, it's so rewarding, it's so, it's its own thing, it's micro, it's its own micro universe that to me doesn't need anything else. Uh, so much so that actually the game does come with an advanced version, so you have an advanced version, if you want to play advanced cat box, then each player gets a set of tokens, and each player also gets a player aid explaining what the tokens do. These are one-time benefits, you play them and they allow you to break the rules in several ways to get several advantages and frankly we tried to play with this halfway through the game we we were bored and we went back to the to the original thing uh, i don't think that the extra complex the extra complexity that these that these rules uh brings is worth the effort it's not that it takes much of an effort to learn these icons, if you've played Euro games, you're familiar with, you know, the idea of memorizing a lot of icons. It is just that to me, well, for my daughters, it's annoying to have to remember all those icons. And for me, it simply dilutes the beauty of such a simple, uh, such a minimalistic design. I much prefer the basic version. But again, if you want that little extra bit of complexity in a game that frankly is not as elegant, then you can play the advanced version too. As is, Catbox is a small filler, one that children can play because of the complexity, will like to play because of the cuteness of the cards. I can definitely see myself playing the game with adults too. Uh, as a filler, as an abstract filler, this is a definitely a good one because it gets me to think, it gets me to, you know, give me enough challenges uh, without overwhelming me. And it's incredibly interactive because you play other people's cards, you cover other people's cards, you threaten them. Every time that you play, you have to keep in mind what other players can do, not just the nice geometric patterns that you're creating. So it's very interactive, very dynamic, very organic, doesn't overstay its welcome, and if it does, you can shorten it. So a lot of good things, a lot of good things in this game that definitely surprised me and pleasantly so. Catbox, a simple abstract filler that definitely I would recommend.